Lesson 12 for June 15 to 21, What Have They Seen in Your House? Read today by Dr. Percy Harold. Tuesday, June 18. Peace that wins. Question, what counsel does the New Testament have for marriages divided by religion? 1 Corinthians 7 verses 12 to 15. But to the rest I, not the Lord, say... If any man has a wife who does not believe, and she is willing to live with him, let him not divorce her. And a woman who has a husband who does not believe, if he is willing to live with her, let her not divorce him. For the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife, and the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband. Otherwise your children would be unclean, but now they are holy. But if the believer departs, let him depart. A brother or a sister is not under bondage in such cases, but God has called us to peace. And First Peter chapter 3, verses 1 and 2. Wives, likewise, be submissive to your own husbands, that even if some do not obey the word, they, without a word, may be won by the conduct of their wives, when they observe your chaste conduct accompanied by fear. The Blessing of Being a Christian Partner In 1 Corinthians, Paul responds to converts' concerns that staying married to an unbelieving spouse might be offensive to God, or bring defilement upon themselves and their children. Not so, says Paul. The sacred state of marriage and its intimacies are to continue after a partner's conversion. The presence of one's Christian partner sanctifies the other partner and the couple's children. The word sanctifies should be understood in the sense that unbelieving spouses come into contact with the blessings of grace through living with their Christian partners. Heart-rending as it is, the unbelieving partner may decide to abandon the marriage. Though consequences will be serious, the merciful word of our God, who always upholds human freedom of choice, is, let him do so. The believer is not bound in such circumstances, 1 Corinthians 7, 15. Call to live in peace. The clear preference of the word of God is that despite the challenges of a spiritually divided home, a way might be found for the peace of Christ to reign there. The hope is to keep the marriage intact, to give evidence of the triumph of the gospel in the midst of difficulty, and to promote the comfort of the partner with whom the believer is one flesh, though he or she be unbelieving. Question. What might be the limitations of a spouse's responsibility toward a non-believing partner? Loving-kindness, unwavering fidelity, humble service and winsome witness on the part of the believer create the greatest likelihood of winning the non-Christian spouse. Submission in a Christian marriage arises out of reverence for Christ, as we read in Ephesians 5.21, submitting to one another in the fear of God. When a spouse relates with Christian submission to an unbelieving partner, the first allegiance is always to Christ. Faithfulness to the claims of God on one's life does not require a spouse to suffer abuse at the hands of a violent partner. And so to finish today, is someone in your church struggling with an unbelieving spouse? If so, in what practical ways could you possibly help? You have been listening to a reading of the Adult Sabbath School Bible Study Guide by Dr. Percy Harold from Queensland, Australia. This service is brought to you by Hope Channel, the Sabbath School Department, and Christian Services for the Blind. Remember, God is always faithful.